Hi, it's Jan Beta, and this is a completely standard Commodore 64, except for the fact that I removed the VIC-2 graphics chip from it and put something else in here. So how is this still displaying the blue screen of life in the background when it doesn't have the graphics chip in there? We are going to find out. <laughs> Obviously, there has to be some kind of replacement in there. And I'm very happy to tell you that there is. This is the latest uh, prototype of the VIC-2 Kavari. And this is an FPGA-based replacement for the VIC-2 graphics chip in the Commodore 64. And as you can see, it uses quite a huge FPGA. This is a Spartan 6. That's why this device is going to be pretty expensive. As I said, it's just a prototype build at this point. I am one of a few testers, beta testers, as my name suggests for this device. Randy Rossi designed it. You've probably seen Adrian Black's video from Adrian's Digital Basement, where he has tested one of the much earlier prototypes of this. This is a single board, quite elegant form factor. You might say, what's the reason for doing something like this? Uh, there are a couple of reasons, really. This, as I said, this uh, FPGA is rather expensive, so at this point you are still going to get a real VIC-2 replacement chip for your Commodore 64 in case that uh, yours fails. These fail pretty frequently, they run pretty warm and they uh, don't last forever basically, so they are failing in ways, uh, mostly they develop some glitches before they completely go blank. Uh, I've, I've rarely seen them go completely blank, but they often develop some flicker and some sprites glitches and some collision stuff doesn't work anymore. And things like that are pretty common in these chips, actually, that you don't catch on first glance. Uh, I've, I've seen a lot of them fail only in particular games using particular tricks and uh, things like that. Yeah, this thing, this little circuit board with the FPGA replaces the VIC-2 completely. So when you stick this thing in, you still get a normal picture output as you would with a VIC-2 in there. That means you have the Luma Chroma output coming from here is still present on the DIN socket in the back of the machine and you also still get a composite out from your regular DIN socket. So this is a full replacement. It can do several things more. Specifically, it has an HDMI output, which is implemented by this micro HDMI header here. And you also have this unpopulated header here, which gives us RGB out and VGA out. It provides the old school video output from the DIN and it also provides all the modern output formats. However, uh, this is not going to be compatible with all monitors. There are some quirks, there are some strange resolutions, of course, because it has to be uh, kind of pixel perfect for uh, this to look good. And yeah, there are some monitors are going to support the resolutions, some aren't going to support the resolutions. Let's just take a look at Randy Rossi's GitHub here for the VIC-2 Kavari. And as you can see, there's quite some info here about what resolutions this thing can output. It can emulate both NTSC and PAL VIC-2 chips, which is quite amazing. And it can also provide its own timings, so you don't necessarily need the timing chip or the timing circuitry that is needed for the original VIC-2 chips. So this can be set in software to different VIC-2 models, even uh, two PAL models and two NTSC models. Uh, the, the PAL models are the 6569. This can also work in the Commodore 64 short boards and it is going to, re to replace those. The differences are minor, so it's probably going to work fine in those boards as well, but it is still going to behave like an older VIC-2. There are a couple of jumpers on the board that you can set. This one is for the oscillators. Some specialty cartridges may not work if you use them. Yeah, as you can see, there's a lot of stuff here 
uh, light pens do work. It is completely, it's completely compatible with the old VIC-2 chips so far. And I've tested it for a bit and it seems to, the picture output looks very similar to the VIC-2. And everything seems to work. We are currently looking for glitches and things like that. So there is going to be some testing. And here are some of the, the extra features that this has implement, implemented. There's no VSP bug. That's a bug that's present in some of the newer VIC-2 chips, particularly, I think, where there's some weird uh, quirks happening and some uh, snow happening in the picture and things like that. Uh, we can have a configurable color, color palette, as I said. We don't need a clock circuit. It can software switch between NTSC and PAL, which is pretty funky, actually, because uh, this works because the clocks are provided through the VIC-2 to the Commodore 64, to the rest of the circuit, so you can actually switch this. We have an 80 column mode in implemented, and yeah, it's not an almost 40 year old device that may fail at any time. And especially uh, interesting about this project is that it's going to be fully open sourced once the beta testing is done. Yeah, and there are some extra graphics modes that we're going to have a look at later, which is pretty amazing. So this is kind of a graphics enhancement for the Commodore 64 as well. And uh, that's kind of cool. There's going to be a lot of tinkering that can be done with that and uh, a lot of things that you can do. There are some quirks. Yeah, the Pi 1541 interferes with it. That's a common, commonly known fault. But other than that, it seems to work very well. Let me take a couple of seconds to thank the sponsor for this video, PCBWay, my favorite manufacturer of prototype PCBs. They have a PCB design contest going on currently. You can check the link out in the video description. You can win awesome prizes by just sending in your PCB design. And if you just want to have your PCBs manufactured by them, I also recommend checking them out. The links are in the video description. Back to the Kawari. Yeah, so far I've only tried uh, the composite out from this machine. I am going to hook up an HDMI cable now because I'm pretty curious how that works. Um, and yeah, as I said, I'm not going to mod this machine in any way. I'm just going to put this cable in here and run a cable out of the case here to my HDMI input and have this just sitting on here loosely, basically. Yes, okay, that's HDMI. Yeah, and as you can see, this is the HDMI output. It is super crisp. And yeah, there's no lag, obviously, because this is a hardware implementation of this. And it's a weird screen mode, as uh, I said previously. Uh, I can switch it between, this is the composite mode, and I can switch this to the HDMI mode. 826 by 528 at 50 hertz is the original resolution, but it seems to work fine. So my uh, monitor can handle that, which it is an old TV. Obviously there's no sound through the HDMI, but this looks pretty amazing. We can have sound from the uh, DIN sockets though, though, as usual. Yeah, but this is now running through HDMI. <laughs> this is basically a Commodore 64 uh, directly hooked up to an HDMI monitor, which is a cool thing in itself, I guess. We are going to do some testing with this, I guess. And I'm also going to test this with some other uh, models of the Commodore 64. I'm pretty interested in putting this into one of the shortboard revisions because uh, basically that would make a shortboard Commodore 64 use an older VIC-2 chip. Yeah, we should try that and I am going to do that with my Aldi C64, I think, that I've set up here. So let's remove the Kavari from this machine and put it in something else. This uh, LED is still lighting because uh, there is so much residual power sitting on here, I guess. 
Oh, it's powered through the HDMI. Okay, that's interesting. That is interesting indeed. So we are going to remove this carefully. And I'm going to use my Aldi C64 here, I think, to try this uh, with the short board. Stacking up some sockets here to have some clearance. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely have to leave this case open here. Oops, it was powered on, okay. <laughs> What? Okay, that's weird. Okay, here's something super weird. Uh, this is powered through the HDMI cable, I think. Uh, this shouldn't be powered on now. Should be, should be off. And it still has power. So uh, the HDMI provides five volts, I guess. Oops, okay. So if I unplug the power supply, this should still, yeah, this is still, this is now powered through the Kavari board. <laughs> ah, okay, that's strange. Okay, so that this is a strange feature, kind of. Uh, this Commodore 64 is completely uh, working, powered on. You can start stuff while it isn't connected to the power supply. It is powered through the VIC-2 Kawari, which uh, basically shouldn't be possible, I guess, but it is. It is even turned off. This machine is turned off altogether. <laughs> Oops, that is very strange. Okay, so we can't, can't turn this off, basically, because it's powered through the HDMI port and through the VIC-2 Kawari. Obviously, the VIC-2 is connected to uh, the power rails, so that's how it works, I guess. These short boards work without any 9-volt uh, AC supply at all, so that's what happens here. Just initializes everything through the 5 volts rail except for the SID, which I think would even work in this case because we have a nano swin SID in there, which only uses the 5 volts as well, I guess. So we probably would have even have sound with the machine turned off, powered through the VIC 2 port here. <laughs> yeah, so let me try to unplug the HDMI. This should immediately turn off because that's the only way this is going to get any juice at this point. Yep. Yeah, that is one strange quirk. Uh, that shouldn't be happening, obviously. So the whole system is powered through the Kavari board. <laughs> That's strange because uh, obviously you can't turn it off like that if you are using a HDMI uh, on the Kavari board. I guess it's kind of a neat feature if you want something like that, but it's not Probably not intentional, shouldn't be. So as you can see, I've now set up the Commodore 64 with the VIC-2 Kavari in it, in my little streaming corner here where I usually stream uh, live on Twitch from. And yeah, I'm just going to capture some of the video. I'm actually using the DIN output for the sound. I'm using a video and AV cable from that DIN socket to the, uh, sound card here and I guess I'm now going to switch to the actual footage so you can hear the SID and see the picture as I'm catch capturing it through my capturing card here. So yeah, let's do that. Yeah, and it does look really good. It does look really crisp. There's obviously no lag at all. Because basically this is replacing the whole chip. So uh, it is generating the signal in real time.
And I think the colors are a bit off, but uh, that is fixable in the utility that this comes with. You can manually set the colors. Yeah, but other than that, this works really well and as you can see it's really smooth and <laughs> uh, yeah, looks as it's supposed to look basically, so yeah. So this comes with a, with a couple of uh, tools actually. So we have this utility disk where we can set uh, different things can set this to a whole different chip model, VIC-2 model. We can introduce raster lines, like so. I'm not a huge fan of that, so we're just going to uh, switch that off. You can set the RGB out to a real 15 kilohertz signal, which some monitors don't support. In standard set, in the standard setting, this is uh, doubled, scan, scan doubled to uh, 30 kilohertz, so it works with more monitors actually. This is for using a native horizontal resolution, can switch that on. Uh, it works for me in this resolution, maybe your mileage may vary with different settings there. And you can use a composite sync on the H-Sync RGB pin for some monitors that is used that is basically what we can do. There's also some stuff that can be used to set the palettes. We are going to do that later. So that's basically what this looks like. This is pretty amazing, as you can see. And there's a lot of stuff that does work right away. So one thing I have noticed when uh, turning this off, power cycling the Commodore 64, the Kavari doesn't necessarily reset correctly, so if I turn this on again, we don't get a picture. And in fact, if I connect this to my CRT here, I can see that there is a very faint signal coming from the Kavari. But I have to unplug the HDMI briefly, and when I switch it on again, it does actually restart correctly, so yeah. There are a couple of utilities that this comes with. You can use those to set the values for the RGB colors. And also there's one for the composite colors that are slightly off as well. As I said, this looks a bit too vibrant for my taste, but I would have to compare this with a, an upscaled picture from a real uh, VIC-2. Okay, let's have a look at some of the special graphics modes this can do. And uh, we have some demos here, one of which looks a bit like the Amiga ball, as you can see. We have some images in the extra graphics modes that have been added. <laughs> this is clearly Grogu. This is some, some neat trick where uh, different picture modes are used at the same time basically. So the original basic screen is still there, but uh, there's also, as you can see, a multicolor higher resolution screen on there. I can exit that. There's one other very useful thing that you can use, uh, which is an 80 columns mode. That is a native 80, 80 columns mode that we can use in basic. <laughs> and as you can see, so yeah, this is basically a real native 80 columns mode. And as you can see, it, it fully works in basic here, which is pretty nice. Uh, problem is that if we reset our C64 now, it's 
it's not going to do anything because it's stuck in this special graphics mode here. And if we power cycle it, it doesn't return to the regular mode. So we have to unplug our HDMI plug and hope for the best. Yeah, as you can see, this also outputs a picture on a real life CRT, like on my uh, Sony PVM here. So yeah, this does work fine. This is through the S video or the Luma Chroma output basically and connected to the S video on this monitor. Uh, yeah, there are some issues with resetting the Kavari. I think it might have to do something with the um, power coming through the HDMI. Whenever I unplug the HDMI, it resets fine, actually. But uh, other than that, this is really impressive. And I mean, yeah, this is like the original output on the Commodore 64. It's basically the same. It works very well and looks like from a real C64, except for it's a bit cleaner, I guess. So you can use this for some impressive things, uh, like having this running through my uh, capturing card here. This is directly hooked up to the HDMI via the pass through on the capturing device. And this is, of course, an analog CRT monitor hooked up to the original DIN AV socket on the Commodore 64. So you can do things like this, which is kind of excellent for streaming, I guess. I think actually the main issue that I'm having here with this thing not resetting properly on power cycling is because of the HDMI uh, not powering down completely. And maybe one solution would be to just uh, cut the pin on the HDMI here that provides the five volts. HDMI outputs five volts. Uh, each standard HDMI port has a five volt line running through it. So maybe that would be the solution for that issue to prevent this from being powered externally through the HDMI just remove the trace for the five volts there. Not sure if that introduces some other issues with certain TVs or something, but yeah, I guess that would be, probably would be a solution for that issue. Yeah, this thing obviously needs a lot more testing and I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm not going to show all the testing I do in this video, obviously, but I'm going to do some extensive tests and report back to Randy. Uh, whenever I find something. I think the issue with the HDMI might just be a simple solution like cutting the trace there, but I'm not quite sure. I don't know enough about HDMI or uh, FPGAs or anything like that to really judge, be the judge of that. I'm just going to report the issue and uh, maybe the solution I'm suggesting to Randy. Yeah, for now, I can say I'm pretty satisfied with this thing and I'm looking forward to seeing this going out of prototype status and out of beta testing. I hope I can help to bring this into kind of a production thing. As I said, this is very likely to become open source. Uh, Randy already said that on his homepage for the project. And I think it's awesome that this will be available at some point to everybody who wants to tinker with it. As I said, it is going to be pretty expensive because of the large FPGA chip on there and uh, there are going to be cheaper real VIC-2 chips. This is going to become pretty important in the future, I think, because the VIC-2 chips fail really frequently and they are like 40 years old chips, so they do fail. Uh, they are all going to fail at some point, probably, if they are in use. And uh, this is a replacement for it that is going to replace a single custom chip in a working C64. Uh, I like that idea that we're going to be able to replace all the separate chips separately and not have one emulation machine. There are FPGA implementations of the whole C64 system, of course, obviously, like the C64 DTV or the MIST FPGA or the MISTER, they all have uh, C64 cores that are doing the same thing basically, but for the whole system. So 
Yeah, I think this is a really cool project. Thanks, Randy, for letting me be part of the beta testing team. And thanks for developing this thing in the first place. I hope I can be helpful in bringing this to uh, the, the next level, basically, and uh, the production level of things. So, yeah, hope you liked this. Hope this was informative. Uh, stay tuned for more. I'm probably going to do more Kavari videos at some point once the software gets updated and things like that. And as always, thanks to everybody who supports my channel here on Patreon or on the channel memberships page on YouTube. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for your thumbs. And hope to see you again on this channel. I'm Jan Beta. Thanks for watching. <laughs> see you next time. Bye.